Info 3 and HTML5. Why? A growing mobile market, comprising of functional phones, smartphones, and rich media devices that enable reach, that enable an exchange of data, and also that enable a lot of engagement. Are you talking about multiple platforms today? Basically led by the iPhone OS. Today the Android is overtaking the iPhone OS in the free market. The Symbian OS, the Windows Mobile, and the Blackberry. And the growing usage of book applications across the world, basically for references, basically for travel, and basically for shopping. And the evolving value chain. I mean, two years back there was a small complement of this and it was still here, but then today it's evolving. And today if you look at the content part, it's not just publishers, institutes, etc. It's also about the content that an individual develops and sends out to a plethora of these devices. And this is about what we as MPS have in place. We are currently working on a lot of applications on HTML5. We are also working on a lot of XML first workflows for EPUB3. And uh, with IPDF, we've been associated with developing EPUB3 standards. And we're also doing a lot of work that we would be presenting on at the Book Expo of America in May. Thank you. And now I'd hand over the mic to William Tesser. Um, real, very quickly, if you consider yourself a really technical person with a, a real technical interest in EPUB, would you just raise your hand, self-identify? Okay. One or two, that's good. I'm not going to be much help to you guys. Uh, if you're more on the, if your interest is more in a sort of business sense about EPUB and, and, and as it emerges, how that might be helpful, um, that, that's I think more my, uh, 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 more my alignment here. So, uh, what, what we really wanted to talk about um, very briefly today, just to give a content context, um, Vital Source Technologies is a is a uh, an ebook provider that's been in the market now for, uh, we've been in the market for almost 12 years, delivering ebook content. And uh, we're, we, we are part of the England Content Group, but we focus in education. And because we focus in education, we've been um, challenged since the very beginning to deliver very complex content, content that uh, has a uh, need beyond just paragraphs and, and headers. And particularly, we've had uh, issues with um, dealing with uh, uh, accessibility for disabled students because, again, in education, this is an incredibly important uh, issue. We've had issues around uh, media, building media into the books. We've, we've been working on this for 10 years. We've, been, we've had issues around uh, just tables, and especially math, because a, a lot of our early books were specifically in health sciences. So here's what we did traditionally, and uh, again, I've got a few slides up here as a reminder for, for me more than anything about, about the conversation. But um, what we did as we entered these, uh, uh, as we entered these, as we encountered these problems in the content, is we did a sort of a brute force response to each one. So in 2006, 2007, we adopted. MathML into our XML format. We created an XML format from scratch in 2000, 2001, Vital Source did, because there wasn't any other way to get the content into XML. We had to develop our own DTD. It was based on DocBook. Those of you that have been around for a while, you'll remember DocBook. We built an XML structure based on that because that's what was in the market at the time. In 2006, we had to adopt MathML. In 2007, whenever MathML finally emerged, we had to adopt HTML table structures and bring them into our DTD. We had to adopt accessibility alt tagging structures when they became available, build them into our DTD. At every step of the way, Vital Source learned that these items were critical for success of an ebook product in education. You could not deliver a product that did not allow for accessibility and allow for good media integration and allow for um, uh, uh, math support, sophisticated math support. Without these things, you, the, the products were falling flat in the market. And a lot of you will remember that there were some products that came out that were very static during that period that, that did not do it. For the end user, the results of our efforts were great. And we had a lot of, uh, of success 
in our segments of the market delivering ebooks e e over the last decade. For the publishers and the content creators, um, we created one headache after another. And we know this because what we were getting out of the publisher's workflow environment were then having to be completely retooled in a third party process and then brought back into our DTD. Now we believe over time we solved a lot of problems that EPUB 3 is now addressing. What we didn't solve was creating a good predictable standardized workflow. It continued to be external to the publisher's workflow. What we're excited about about EPUB 3 as a business, as a, as a solution provider, the reason we think it's so important is the standard has finally emerged that takes care of all of those things that is going to come out of a standard workflow for publishers. Now, when I say standard workflow for publishers, I mean you have an in-house InDesign based, for example, workflow process. You're going to be able to export into EPUB 3 and we're going to be able to just accept that file and do what we do with it without it having to go through third-party uh, uh, extra processes. Most important, we're going to be able to standardize QA. So EPUB 3 is going to give you the ability to have an, a, a single QA process for that EPUB 3 file that is then going to export into my system, into other software systems, without each one having to have its own, which, again, we, we're very sensitive to the fact that up until now, we've had to have a standalone QA process for, for content to come into our system. And it adds cost to the process. And we're, we're very, very excited, very hopeful that EPUB 3 is going to solve that problem for us. It's going to come along, and it's going to help us um, get rid of uh, a separate QA development process for every channel you want to put that, uh, that content into. That's the, from a, a business perspective, as a solution, end user solution provider platform, that's what we feel like is the real promise of it. Now, we are also realists, and we know that uh, there's going to be a certain amount of variation. A cert there are going to be, continue to be a certain number of variables in EPUB 3, for example, around Java support, things like that, that end users like us are going to have slightly different approaches. And we know there's going to continue to be a need for um, uh, publisher services groups to manage a lot. Of, it's never quite as easy as, you, as it would seem. And there's going to continue to be a role for a management of the certain amount of variables within an EPUB 3 kind of workflow. Again, that's where we're, we're very excited about being able to work with a group like NPS who is able to provide that kind of an oversight, that kind of coordination. We're very excited about uh, the ability to get uh, what for us is a little further upstream into publisher services environments um, to work on these. We're around and available for comment. Uh, we're going to be taking some questions in a minute, but uh, uh, before we go to questions, I'm going to hand it over to Bob to talk in a little more technical and a little more depth about EPUB 3 itself. Thanks. Hello. One of the things that has really struck me about being in London Book Fair this year and it struck me about being at virtually any of the fairs over the last couple of years is that we're all talking now extensively about digital. This is not the way things were three or four years ago. And part of the reason for that has to do with EPUB. Why is EPUB important? EPUB was finally the breakthrough that gave us a standard that worked across the board to allow publishers to digitalize their product with one file, one file structure, and be able to get it into multiple readers. It's not that the industry hadn't digitalized before, as William had pointed out, there were lots of different digital solutions out there. Uh, there was actually a considerable market in a, number of, in a number of different products, but we didn't have one universal solution that allowed us to move forward. The problem with that universal solution is that technology surpassed it. We, we had a solution that worked very well for print, that worked very well for making it available for the basic, the first generation of readers that came out, but now suddenly we have a whole host of new devices that are out there that give us great new opportunities, great new possibilities, but which we had not addressed as an industry in terms of developing a standard for it. So the IDPF, which is the International Digital Publishing Forum, undertook last year to try to get out ahead of the technological revolution that was going on, and we chartered the development 
Uh, EPUB 3. The EPUB 3 working group was set up uh, a year ago and was given what seemed to many to, at the time to be an impossible task. To basically put together an entire new standard in a year that was engaged with, uh, with trying to integrate CSS3, HTML5, and a variety of other uh, demands that were, that were sort of coming from publishers uh, in a standard within another year. Uh, one of the reasons why this was seen as slightly impossible is because CSS3 and HTML5 themselves are not yet baked as standards and probably won't be for another two years. But by working uh, intimately with the different standards organizations, by bringing in stakeholders from across the industry and internationally, we are at a point now where we will be announcing the final version of EPUB 3 on May 23rd at the BEA. Uh, we are in the public comment phase right now, and our, our standard I'll, I'll have on here later on, you, you can go to our website and actually be able to bring yourselves up to date as to exactly where we're at with the standard at this point in time. Uh, and you'll be able to, to see where we've gotten to. Now let's get to sort of the heart of the matter. Why did we need EPUB 3 and what were we trying to accomplish? Well, one of the things the new devices do is they give us the opportunity, first of all, to integrate multimedia with print. And one of the things about EPUB 3, and I think it's a, it's a real credit to this industry, is that unlike the MP3 or MPEG-4, which essentially wind up, wind up being standards for each of their media, EPUB 3 actually is the first cross-media platform standard that is on the market, that actually integrates video, audio, print, animation, uh, 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 nav navigation capabilities within the touchscreen environment. And that was a really important thing that we wanted to be able to build into uh, the, the new standard. Second thing is we wanted the international and international uh, uh, publishers uh, forum to really be truly international. Uh, EPUB 1 and 2 basically supported any kind of Roman script language, but we really did not properly support non-Roman language groups. We wanted to bring in the entire community of the world into EPUB 3. And with EPUB 3, we'll be able to support properly Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, any non-Roman script that's out there. One of the other, one of the other uh, opportunities that came out of that is that not only are we going to be able to support that, we will now also be able to support MathML and science characters properly, not just as JPEGs within the text, but actually as searchable, uh, searchable characters with, within text. Very, very important breakthrough, especially for textbook and academic publishers. We also had a very strong mandate from the disability community, which has been a very, very large part of the, uh, of the IDPF working group, to make sure that accessibility standards were built into uh, EPUB 3. And I'm very happy to say that, that with the production of EPUB 3, any uh, content that is produced within EPUB 3 will be fully compliant with NIMAS, DAISY, and all of the international disability standards around the world for text-to-speech and, and, uh, and audio. Um, we're also looking to bring in, bring in stronger metadata, cross-linking, uh, take advantage of touch-screen touch navigation, etc. What I'm hoping is that we'll have a chance to engage in a little bit of dialogue here. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I want to basically cut it off at that at this point in time. Thank you.